Hello, it's May 8th, 2013. I have a few minutes and I thought I would just do a little recording because if you want to produce and get out there, baby, you gotta be consistent and I have not been consistent. Just wanted to share a couple things. You know, in a few minutes, my Toronto Maple Leafs are gonna be playing game, what is this, game four of their series where they are down two games to one against the Boston Bruins. First time in nine years the Toronto Maple Leafs have been in the playoffs. Excited to have them there, but they are in tough against those Boston, those mean Boston Bruins. So I'm going to catch some of that tonight. I had a little bit of time in between that and dinner as the kids are gone to play some soccer, and Mommy was kind enough to bring them there. Sometimes I can't even figure out how a single parent does it. I'm having to go everywhere with the kids, I get them ready. And then uh, the handing off of the duties of bringing up kids is really helpful. Really grateful to have that with my situation. But anyway, let's go on. I wanted to talk about something with you that I think is super important, and I think it's important for me and for you, but I also think it's important for the future of our kids. I was listening to um, Dan Miller's podcast, 48 Days to the Work You Love, and quite often uh, he had brought up this book, and it is a book called Wheat Belly by William Davis. Now, I did have some interest into it back then when I heard it, and he talked, he, I, I think I heard about him talk about it for about hmm, close to six to eight months, and I finally picked up a copy this last weekend. We were in Minneapolis, and we were in Target, and it was 30% off. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, you know, this basically is a book that explains why modern wheat and and the way it's created is actually no good for us and it goes into lots and lots of detail about all of the side effects sometimes i thought after reading the book that it's almost too much detail i kind of wanted to get right into okay what do i need to do or what kind of foods do you recommend menus in that but it is important in the end to go through the first half of the book and understand what, where wheat has come from and where wheat uh, is now today and some of the scientific evidence that they have that is causing a lot of problems in people from very young ages to adults. Now, wheat belly is about how gluten from the wheat, again, I'm not an expert on this subject by any means, but gluten is one of the main proteins that comes from wheat that uh, it causes a lots, it causes lots and lots of problems. Now, it's not just bread and bagels and those usual suspects you're thinking that are harmful. It's many, many other byproducts. One of the things he goes into is the examples of all the different other foods that you would have around the house that contain wheat. We're talking cereals, crackers, pasta. And I mean, I'm not looking off a list here, but there's a lot of other items. For example, like um, breadcrumbs. Well, that kind of makes sense. But... Um, Many, many products contain wheat. And now why? There's there's lots of, I don't know, issues with the um, the standards, the health standards, American, and I'm sorry, I don't know the names here, but the official uh, places talking about nutrition 
really, really pushing whole grains. You know, even myself, I remember people talking about it, saying you have to have eat whole grains, you know, cereals, keep that colon clean. Well, most of those whole grains are wheat based and the wheat has an adverse effect on many functions, including brain functions, including the lining of our intestines, which absorb the nutrients. Now, I heard about gluten-free way back when, when my daughter was young. We were going to, and we did uh, put her on a gluten-free diet. And back then, I wasn't quite sure what that was fully. But after reading this book, I totally get it. Although you couldn't tell from my ramblings and my unofficial terminology here. But uh, as I read more, I will learn more. And now that I understand gluten, I've decided to do a little gluten experiment. And basically, it's the wheat that we're talking about. Although barley and rye do have some bad properties uh, associated with gluten as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm on my third day right now not eating uh, any kind of wheat, any kind of products that contain wheat, and um, and not substituting it with crap either. You know, you want to eat good foods. You don't want to substitute it with candy bars and that. It's all about insulin. You know, the um, I think I, if I do any more of these episodes, I'll, I'll go into some of the the chemistry behind it and why they why they are saying this. I mean, it's not just uh, conjecture and, and guesses. This is all stuff that they could scientifically measure in our body the way our uh, blood responds and, and different levels of different chemicals after eating bread. For example, just to, just to give you the impact of this, if you eat two pieces of whole wheat bread, it has the same chemical effect on your insulin as if you had a can of pop. That's amazing. And the problem is with the insulin is if you do that to your body, uh, if you get your body to overproduce insulin regularly, you start wearing those systems down and that's when you become a diabetic. Now again, please do not take any medical advice I offer as the gospel. I am not a doctor. But I am concerned for myself, number one, because, of course, I need to function for my family. I need to live. But I'm also concerned now for my kids. You know, I see my daughter has a huge attraction to these carb wheat type products. She loves crackers. Uh, you know what? Those, um, I forgot what they're called. But... She loves cereal. She loves her breads. And all of this stuff on a regular basis is causing havoc in your bodies. One of the things that really attracted me to the book, if you look on the back cover, it says weight loss of 20, 30, even 50 pounds in the first few weeks is not surprising. For Now, this is overly big people. Thankfully, I'm not there. But I'll tell you, I've been struggling the last few years, and I haven't figured out why. And you know what? I love my cereals. I grew up on cereal in the morning. I grew up on cereal before bed. Even now as an adult, I eat cereal before bed. Well, I did. And <clears throat> I would always feel like I am bloated after that. And I was thinking it's milk. I have to have the milk allergy. But I don't have a milk allergy. What I think I do have is some sort of intolerance or the gluten is affecting me in some way, not in a disease way, but in a negative way, which you'll read about in the book. And I am really excited at the possibilities of using this um, non-bread, non-gluten or gluten-free lifestyle to improve my health. Like I could lose 10 pounds, 10 to 15 pounds, maybe even 20 pounds uh, right now. And I've, I've been low on energy. My concentration sometimes isn't there, plus other things. I, mean, I haven't written any of this stuff down. I'm just going by memory on some of the things that these guys, that, uh, what's his name? 
William Davis talks about in this book. So I guess this little episode, this little recording is about this new adventure that I'm on, this experiment. I'm definitely going to go for an experiment of at least a week. I'm hoping for a lifetime at this point, really, a lifetime of gluten-free living. And it's not its not a radical shift in what you're doing. I really want you to uh, have a look at this book. If you're interested, it says lose the weight... L- Sorry, lose your lose the wheat, lose the weight, and find your path back to health. This isn't an exercise book, folks. This is a book on some very serious issues that are going on. Um, even these organizations that are pushing these high whole wheat, high fiber diets are actually causing more damage than good. Read all about that in the the wheat belly. They are subsidizing this industry and pushing more wheat out there you know they the wheat uh, and the wheat products can be made very cheaply for example he states a figure not exactly this i don't think but for 5 cents of wheat they could make a several dollars profit uh in their products so i i don't I'm not blaming anybody um like the farmers and all the people involved in that, they don't really know. But because of the genetic changes to wheat over the last few years, well, centuries, I guess, especially in the last few years, they never did any studies on why or on what effects the wheat has on a cellular level of a human being. <clears throat> so all they... All they knew is that they could make crops that are resistant to bugs. They could make crops that are, uh, they'll grow several times per year in a season. Um, Crops that are physically stronger, they're compressed. I think they call them dwarf wheat. And the fellow that created the dwarf wheat, excuse me, was doing it for good intentions. He wasn't doing it to hurt anybody, but they never tested this stuff on human beings. And, they they couldn't really like it's it's not so black and white. You really have to get down to it uh, on what's happening to us after we take this weed in, and what's it doing to our insulin levels. I am pumped. I don't know if you could tell. I am pumped. I'm going to give you a little bit of how excited I am right now. <laughs> well, that's the only sound effect I have at my disposal. <clears throat> All right, I've been talking for 13 minutes. I would love to hear you, anyone, talk about uh, their journey into gluten-free living. And uh, I'm starting with myself, and I'd hopefully like to get my family on this as well, and anybody I could spread the message to. So that's it for the gluten-free experiment. For now, my third day, I have not touched anything wheat-related. I've been eating good proteins. I have chicken, eggs. I had a little bit of spare ribs today. Um, some nuts, vegetables, a little bit of beans. Also, he does talk about um, other foods that affect your levels of sugar, which trigger insulin response and uh, the effects on that. So lots of good information there. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little episode. You know, it's been a while since I've been behind the microphone. I want to get back at it, and hopefully we can do more of this soon. You can check me out on Twitter at A-L-B-E-R-T-H-A-T-H-A-Z-I. I do lots of crazy things, experimentation on myself. So stay tuned to this channel wherever you hear it. I'd love to hear feedback. If you get a chance, tweet me or leave a comment. And uh, let's talk. Got lots of cool things going on in the future. Health, business, um, family. Until then, I will talk to you next time.